Okay, this pre-lecture video is just going to cover some bits of the manner of articulation for consonants, and we'll finish the rest in lecture just so it's not super packed. So manner of articulation refers to what airflow is doing coming from your lungs out of your mouth. So if we take a look at these two face diagrams, we see a difference in uh, what the tongue is doing. So in both cases, these are going to be alveolar sounds, but we notice that on the left, if we were to draw a line for air to go out of the mouth, we would end up being stopped behind the tongue, while if we were to draw a line on the right side, we would be able to go through this narrow little passage and get out of the mouth. So uh, we've done some face diagrams in tutorials, so you might be able to identify that the sound on the left is a T, T, and the sound on the right is a s or an s. So these have different manners of articulation and therefore we give these different names when referring to sounds. Uh, if we just say voiceless alveolar, we're not sure is that a t or a s. So manner of articulation will be able to distinguish those for us and give each sound a unique description. So the first one is a stop. And this is a very nice name because this is exactly what air is doing. No matter which diagram we look at, if we try to get air out of the oral cavity, it eventually is stopped behind your articulators. So on the left one, we have air being stopped behind the two lips. So this is a bilabial stop, and this would represent the sound P. If we were to take a look at the middle one, that's what we just saw. It stopped behind the alveolar ridge, so this is a T. And on the right, well, the right's a little bit different, but it's still a stop. So uh, if we were to try to get air out of the oral cavity, it would be stopped behind the, uh, the velum. So this is a velar stop, but this is a special type of velar stop because airflow is also going out of the nose. So even though airflow is getting out, stop refers to what's happening in the oral cavity. So this is a special type of stop called a nasal stop. So if stops don't go through the nose, we just call them stops. But if they go out of the nose, we call them nasal stops. So in this case, this is going to be a velar sound. It's going to be a stop. So this will be mm. And there's a little air in this diagram because these vocal folds should be vibrating if we're really going for mm. So this might be a, a non-English voiceless nasal. So all of the English stops are listed below, and I'd like you to pronounce each of these, uh, especially the first six and the last one, to confirm to yourself that air is stopping before that sound is released. With the nasals, air flows going through the nose, so it's a little bit harder to feel any air pressure at all inside the mouth. Um, but I assure you, air is not escaping through the mouth when you produce those sounds, which is why they're stops. The second one is a fricative, and with fricatives, you get a little bit of space for air to move through. These are sounds that you can hold. Uh, so in the case of the left sound, these lips should be open, not shut for the first and second ones. So let me just very briefly fix that. I'll update the lecture notes, but the video will have some weirdness there. So the lips are open there. But uh, airflow is able to continuously be held and pass through this tight space. What's happening is there's a ton of air pressure being built up behind uh, the articulator and only a little bit is getting through at a time. So this is why we get some noisiness like uh, we also have H huh, as in fricative as well. So the one on the left, uh, this is alveolar fricative. I'm noticing that also all of these nasal passages are open. Sorry, I will have to fix these slides for the videos. I'm not quite sure what was happening there. Um, so I'll just fill those in. So for each of these, the one on the left, this is going to be your alveolar s. The one in the middle, it's being stuck in the palatal alveolar region. That's where the turbulence is happening. That's where the friction is happening. So fricative comes from friction. So this would be sh. 
And then the one on the right, well, this is a fricative between your two teeth, is voiceless. So this is an interdental Now you might notice that there's not any space on this right one. So if we zoom in real close, we can see that if you were to draw an airflow, you might not actually be able to draw a line out. But that's because with these interdental and labiodental sounds, th and v, uh, you are making contact, but air is escaping either through the sides of the lips, the side of the teeth. Uh, it's, it's exiting not directly in the center. So it's a little bit more difficult to draw a diagram for that, um, but those would be all the fricatives at the bottom too. So F, V, S, Z, Th, Th, Sh, Z, and H. Those are all the ones that we have in English. The last one we're gonna talk about today is an affricate. Uh, face diagrams are not really possible to draw for these affricates, and that's because these are sounds that essentially um, have two articul have two articulations happening near simultaneously. First, it starts at a stop position, and then it releases immediately into a fricative. So that's why these symbols, like uh, ch, are two sounds with the tie bar. It starts as a t, it releases as a sh, so you get ch really quickly. So uh, this diagram does its best to illustrate this. Uh, the convenient thing is that there are only two affricates in English that we need to worry about, which is ch and j. Uh, but these sounds are a little bit more involved than stops and fricatives. It is important to note that this is not a stop and a fricative coming together. This is its own category called an affricate. So don't break these up into their components and say, uh, we have an alveolar stop and then we have a pa palatal alveolar fricative. No, it's just a palatal alveolar affricate. Uh, there are some other languages that have different affricates, like uh, German has f. Um, in Greek, you have ts. In uh, Mandarin, as you'll see, you have to figure that out on your assignment. You have ts. In fact, uh, some people even say English has ts at the big at the uh, ends of words, but we're not going to get uh, into that. So that's an affricate. So. Try this quick exercise, pause the video, see if you can identify each of these as a stop fricative or affricate, and then that'll be it for the pre-lecture video. So here are the solutions. Hopefully you've tried it. Triumph. Mm, mm. So even though air is going through the nasal cavity, in terms of your oral cavity, your mouth, air is not escaping. So this is a stop, but more specifically, it's a nasal stop because you do have air going through that nasal cavity. The nasal is important. If we just called it a stop, then it could be B. Nasal stop says, no, it's not B, it's actually M. Cheers. Ch, ch, ch. This is going to be an affricate. So if you were to prepare to say ch, but not release it, you'd end up with, there wouldn't be any sound coming out. But once you release it, you can hold it. Ch. So that's what affricates are able to do that stops and fricatives can't do. Uh, stops have this uh, silence before release, fricatives have this continuous release, and affricates have a bit of both. Three, in thoughtful. We can hold that sound, we can feel some friction and turbulence, so this is going to be a fricative. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. Uh, in lecture, we're going to cover some more, so liquids and glides, and then we'll go into vowels. But if you have any questions about this, I'll be sure to let you have a time at the beginning of class to ask, or you're free to ask on Discord, Canvas, or wherever else. So enjoy the long weekend, unless it's already passed by, and I'll see you Wednesday.